All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem says, let f or the function f be differentiable on the open interval from a to b and continuous on the closed interval from a to b. Then there is at least one number c in that open interval such that the derivative at point c is equal to the slope between points a and b. That is what this part of this equation means. And so if you remember from algebra, this was actually our formula for slope. We said that this was equal to m. And so this just represents the slope between the two endpoints of our interval. And so let's take a look at what this means right here. What does the mean value theorem really say? Because sure, it's nice to have a definition, but it doesn't do us any good unless we truly understand what it means in a scenario. And so if you look at this graph down here, we have point A and we have point B, and they're each at different heights, right? We have our value of A on the function and our value of B on the function that line up here. And what the mean value theorem says is if we were to connect a line between these two points, somewhere along that line, there's going to be a point that has the same slope as the slope between the two points. And so what that means is if I were to connect these two points, let's say with a straight line, well, obviously this line is going to have the slope between these two points. But let's say I didn't draw a straight line and instead I drew an arc between these two points. Does this graph have a point on it that is equal to the slope between these two points? Now, let me actually redraw that line. I'll put it in a different color here. This is the slope between the two points. That purple line there is the slope between points A and B. Is there a point on this function, this blue line, where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope between these two points? And the answer is yes. If I were to follow along our line here, it seems that right about here, if we were to draw a tangent line, so like right about there, this would have the same slope as the slope between these two points. And so what the mean value theorem says is this is always going to happen. No matter what kind of line we draw to connect these two points, given that it would represent a continuous and differentiable function, we are going to have at least one point where the slope is the same as the slope between these two points. And so obviously, like I said, if we were just to draw a line between these two points, every point along that line has the same slope as the slope between these two points. But if you connect them in any other way, such as with this arch or any other type of line, there is going to be at least one point where with that same slope that is between those two lines. That is what the mean value theorem says. And so if we were to look at a function on some interval from A to B, and it is differentiable and continuous on the interval, then we can be sure that there's going to be at least one number C on that interval where the slope at that point is equal to the slope between our endpoints. So let's look at an example and verify that this theorem works for a function that meets these requirements. So here we want to verify the mean value theorem for the function f of x equals x cubed plus x minus 4 on the interval from negative 1 to 2. And we want to find all the values of c such that f prime of c, or the derivative at that point, is equal to the slope between our endpoints, right? Remember that the derivative is the slope of a function, right? The derivative function represents the slope of our function at any particular point. And so if we plug in a point such as c, we're going to have the slope of that function at that point c. That is what this means. And so the first thing we want to do to verify that the mean value theorem is going to work for this function is to check to see if it is continuous and differentiable on our interval. Now the differentiability part actually only applies to the numbers between the endpoints. That's why we had that open interval. So you don't have to worry about the function not being differentiable at the endpoints, just the points in between them. But it does need to be continuous for the entire interval, including the endpoints. So let's check that. Is this function going to be continuous on this interval? And if you're not sure, just remember the things that would make a function not continuous. And that would be anything in a function that would cause it to have a break or a gap of some kind. And that's most common in rational functions where we have a fraction, a numerator, and a denominator. Typically the denominator is going to cause some issues. And so I don't believe there are any parts of this function that are going to be undefined, where there's going to be a gap, right? x cubed plus x minus four is a polynomial. And so there really isn't going to be a point on this function or more specifically on this interval that is going to be undefined. And so we can say that this function is continuous on that interval. And so we'll say that we checked continuity. So continuity, check. 
So now let's check differentiability. And if you're not sure how to check differentiability, remember that you can just take the derivative of your function. And if that derivative is continuous on the interval, then you know that it's differentiable because differentiability is just the continuity of the derivative function. And so that's the easiest way to go about this. And so in this case, let's do that just to be sure. So we'll take the derivative here and we'll have f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. That is using the power rule on our x cubed term, right? If we multiply by three and subtract one from our exponent, we will have three x squared. And then a derivative of x will be just one, so we'll have plus one. And then a derivative of negative four is zero, so we don't need to write that. And just like our original function, our derivative function here is going to be continuous on our interval. I don't see any part of this function that is going to have an undefined value or a break or a gap of any kind. So we're good here. We can now check off differentiability. And just a quick note that differentiability does imply continuity. So if you wanted, you could just right away start with checking the differentiability and then you can imply that it is also continuous. So that's kind of a quick little shortcut that you can do as well. Might save you a little bit of time. So now that we've checked that both of these things are true for this function on the given interval, we can now try to verify the mean value theorem. And so the next thing that we wanna do is evaluate our endpoints on the function, and that's gonna help out with our calculation of the slope. And so if we start with our first endpoint, negative one, we'll have f of negative one is equal to negative one cubed plus negative one minus four. And that's going to be equal to negative one cubed, which would be negative one plus negative one, so negative two, minus four, which would be negative six. And then if we plug in our other endpoint, which is two, f of two is going to be equal to two cubed plus two, so two cubed is eight, so we'll have eight plus two minus four. So eight plus two equals 10, minus four is equal to six. So now we have our two values that we're going to need to calculate our slope between the two endpoints. So let's do that next. So our slope calculation M is going to be equal to this right here. The value of the function at two minus the value of the function negative one, which we said was six and negative six. So we're gonna have six minus negative six and that's gonna be divided by two minus negative one. So we'll have two minus negative one, right? We just took our two endpoints and we subtracted the first one from the second one. And so if we were to solve for this, we'd have six minus negative six, which would be positive 12. And then that would be divided by two minus negative one, which would be positive three. And so 12 divided by three is four. And so that's our slope. And so now what we can do with this is since we checked that it was continuous and differentiable on the interval, we can set our derivative equal to this slope and solve for values of C. And so what we'll do is we'll say that the slope of four is equal to our derivative and we're gonna change our X to C. So we'll have three C squared plus one. And so now what this does is allows us to solve for those values of C on this function where the derivative is equal to four which is the slope between these two endpoints. And so if I do that, we subtract one from both sides, we'll have three equals three C squared. And then if we divide both sides by three, we'll have one equals C squared. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we'll find that C is equal to plus or minus one. Now we have two values of C here, but we need to remember what the mean value theorem says. We're just looking for values of C between the two endpoints. And as you'll see, negative one is actually one of our endpoints here. So we don't really care about that negative value. So we'll say that we just want C equals one, and that's going to be our value of C that verifies that the mean value theorem applies to this function on this interval. So hopefully this process made sense. We just verified that the mean value theorem does work for this function on this interval. So now it's important to realize that the mean value theorem is not going to apply to all functions. For example, we have the function f of x is equal to the absolute value of x on the interval from negative three to three, and the mean value theorem does not apply for this function because we have a point that is not differentiable at x equals zero. And I know I said that you can check for differentiability by taking the derivative of your function, but a lot of people are not familiar with taking the derivative of the absolute value of x. So instead, keep this in mind, that if you see absolute value bars, that is a big red flag, right? You should note immediately that it's probably not gonna be differentiable on your interval, but it's always good to check. So what I would do, if you're not sure where the function is not going to be differentiable, just set what is inside your absolute value bars 
equal to zero and then solve for x. And so if I set what's inside these bars equal to zero, we'd have x equals zero. And that tells me that the non-differentiable point is at x equals zero. And so because of that, this function is not differentiable between these two endpoints. It has a point that's not differentiable. And so therefore the mean value theorem does not apply to this function. And as you can see, the slope between these two points would be a straight line and that is zero, but there is no slope at x equals zero and no other point between those two endpoints has the slope of zero. So that's why the mean value theorem does not apply here. And the same is going to go for our function one divided by x minus one. As you see here, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals one, because if I were to plug one into our function here, we would have an undefined value. We'd have one minus one, which is zero, and you cannot divide a number by zero. And so on the interval from zero to two, there is a slope between these two points, but there is no point between them that is going to have that slope because of this asymptote. And as we know, an asymptote creates a discontinuity in our function. So this function is not continuous on this interval, and so therefore the mean value theorem is not going to apply, which is why you don't see any points between these two endpoints that have the same slope that would be between these two points. So hopefully that makes sense. These are just two examples of many examples where the mean value theorem is not going to apply. So here we have another example where we wanna know if the mean value theorem can be applied to a particular function. In this case, we have the function f of x is equal to x to the fourth power minus eight x. And we wanna know if the mean value theorem can be applied to it on the interval from zero to two. And if it can be, we wanna find all values of c such that the derivative at that point c is equal to the slope between our two endpoints. And so the first thing that we wanna do whenever we try to see if the mean value theorem can be applied is to check for continuity and differentiability on our interval. And remember, if we find that this function is differentiable on our interval, then we also know that it's going to be continuous. And so let's do that this time. And spoiler alert, it is going to be differentiable and continuous because it is a polynomial. This is pretty easy to see that it's not gonna have any undefined values or breaks. There's not gonna be anything that is not continuous about this function, but just for the example's sake, let's do it anyway. We'll have that f prime of x is equal to four x cubed minus eight, All right? The derivative of x to the fourth would be four times x. And then we'd subtract one from our exponent to get four x cubed. And that's just using the power rule. And then we have the derivative of negative eight x would just be negative eight. And so if we look at this function, once again, this is also going to be continuous on this interval. You can plug any value in between these two endpoints and your function is going to be defined there. So we can safely assume that this function is differentiable. And we also know because it's differentiable that it's also going to be continuous which is also true if you were just to look at the function itself that we started with, this is going to be continuous on this interval. There's gonna be no discontinuities. And so now that we have checked that these two things are true, we can now apply our mean value theorem. And so the first thing we wanna do is find this slope between our two endpoints. And so then what you should do is plug in each of your endpoints, zero and two, into your original function to get their y values, or what's going to be on the top of our slope calculation. So we'll start with zero. We'll have f of zero is equal to zero to the fourth power minus eight times zero, which hopefully is obvious that this is equal to zero. Zero to the fourth power is zero, and then minus eight times zero is zero. So zero minus zero is zero. And then let's check our other endpoint. We'll have f of two, and that's gonna be equal to two to the fourth power minus eight times two. And that will be equal to two to the fourth power, which is 16 minus eight times two, which is also 16. So we'll have 16 minus 16, which is zero. And if you remember Rolle's theorem, this would actually apply to Rolle's theorem as well because these two y values are the same. But in this case, we are looking at the mean value theorem. And so we'll still go through the process of calculating the slope, but you will see that it's just gonna be setting this derivative equal to zero. So let me show you what I mean by that. If we calculate the slope, we'll have m is equal to f of two minus f of zero, right? We're taking the y values of our higher endpoint minus our lower endpoint. That is what this is right here, right? If this was a and b, this matches up with this. And then we're gonna divide by two minus zero. And that's just gonna be equal if we plug in our values that we just solved, right? It would be equal to zero minus zero over two minus zero, which is just gonna be equal to zero divided by two which is zero. And so this is where the mean value theorem and Rolle's theorem kind of overlap or intersect. If your slope between your two points is zero, there's really no difference between checking between the mean value theorem and Rolle's theorem. You're really doing the same thing because what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that slope of zero equal to our derivative and just change that X out for C 
so that we can solve for those values of c where this is true, right? Because these two endpoints have the same height or the same y value, the same output from this function, which is what we had to check for Rolle's theorem to make sure that we could apply that to a function. And so this is one of many scenarios where this might happen, where the process of the mean value theorem is actually almost identical to the process of Rolle's theorem. And so now let's solve for our value of c. If we add eight to both sides, we'll have eight equals four c cubed. And then if we divide both sides by four, we'll have two equals c cubed. And then if we take the cubed root of both sides, we'll have c is equal to the cubed root of two. And so that's going to be our value of c, where the value of its derivative is equal to the slope between the two endpoints, right? That is what we found here. So this point on this function has a slope of zero, which is also the slope between our two endpoints. Let's look at one more example. So now we wanna check if the mean value theorem can be applied to the function x to the two thirds power. And that's gonna be on the interval from negative one to one. And once again, we wanna find all value c such that the value of the derivative at c is equal to the slope between our two endpoints. And so let's start by checking to see if this function is differentiable and continuous on our interval. And so we'll start with the differentiability. We'll have that f prime of x is equal to two thirds x to the two thirds minus one power, right? That's just using our power rule on this function. We multiplied by our exponent and then subtracted one from it. So if we simplify this, we'll have two thirds times x to the negative one third power. And we don't really like to work with negative exponents. So let's move that to the denominator of our quantity. So this will be equal to two divided by three times x to the one third power. And so our question here is, if this function is going to be differentiable on this interval, this derivative function needs to be continuous on this interval, right? Differentiability is just the continuity of the derivative. And so if you ever see a rational function or a function that has a numerator and a denominator, where the denominator has a variable such as x, ask yourself, what value, if I plug in, is going to make the denominator zero. And so you could set this equal to zero and then solve for x so that you can see where your function is undefined. And if you did that for this scenario, you would find that x would be equal to zero. And so that would mean that the derivative is not continuous at x equals zero, which means that the original function is not differentiable at x equals zero, which is unfortunately a point on our given interval. And so in this case, the mean value theorem cannot be applied to our function on the given interval. So here's what we'll write. We'll say that the mean value theorem cannot be applied to f of x, and then we'll write a period, and then we'll give our reason. You usually want to give a reason why it's not. Otherwise, whoever's grading your work is not gonna know why you can't apply it. You also have to give them a reason. So we'll say that f of x is not differentiable at x equals zero. And so that is the answer to this particular problem, or that would be your solution, that there really is no solution because it's not differentiable at x equals zero. We cannot solve for any values of c where this would be true. Now I should point out that the reason we can make this statement is because this point x equals zero, where the function's not differentiable, is between the points on this interval. Because imagine instead that we had the interval from zero to one, a closed interval from zero to one this wouldn't affect it. Because if you go back to the mean value theorem, it says that for differentiability, the function just has to be differentiable between the two endpoints, not including the endpoints. That's what that open interval means. So if instead this interval was from zero to one, this wouldn't affect it, and we could go through with applying the mean value theorem. So hopefully that makes sense. If your point where the function is not differentiable is an endpoint, you can continue on with applying the theorem. So that's it, that's all I had for this lesson. Hopefully you found it to be helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions and you wanna see some more examples, I'll have an examples video linked at the end of this video as well as in the description that you can check out. So that's all I have for now. I will see you next time.